Words that I say Downtown the lights out but we choose to stay I don't know where this may go These strangers know all the words at my shows I tell she loving our style Shit makes her face red whenever I smile I lay down, takes off her clothes Wake up, I leave for the door Tell myself I don't need a drink It's Q&A time Jumping off the porch like mom's not home What's up guys, it's Josh and we're back again with another video. Today we're going to be doing the long-awaited Q&A. I got dozens of Snapchats from you guys over the past couple days and I'm about to open them now and answer all your questions. Let's get started. Alright, first question. Will Doyle asks, Hey, is this a YouTuber from Yale? Saw your recent video. Enjoying the series. Yes. Yes, this is a YouTuber from Yale. And I'm really glad that you're enjoying the videos, Will. Also, if I mispronounce your name, Please forgive me. I'm trying my best, okay? <laughs> All right, next question. Elian Haddock asks, Josh, dude, what's up? I'm committed to Yale for men's soccer next year, and I'm really excited about it. Awesome. I'm glad you're committed to Yale. Uh, here's my question. Why did you choose to apply to Yale and not Harvard and Princeton? What made Yale different? Thanks, and keep up the good work. Okay, so I only applied to two Ivy Leagues. I applied to Yale and Princeton. I didn't apply to Harvard just because I, I really didn't see myself going there. The reason I chose Yale and Princeton was they both had good engineering programs and they both had the majors that I wanted. But what really attracted me to Yale was everything I saw when I visited. I mean, everything from the residential college system to all the support that you have here with your dean, your frocos, your head of college, your advisors. I mean, there's so many people here to help you succeed. And also on the social level, all the people here are amazing. They're all super nice. It doesn't seem competitive at all. Everyone's super diverse and comes from a lot of different backgrounds and I've really enjoyed meeting everyone here so far. Um, Elian, I hope that answered your question and I hope to see you around next year. Alright, uh, Lavinia asks, hi, in what residential colleges are you staying and what do you think about the dorms? So I made a video a couple weeks ago talking about my residential college. I'm in Timothy Dwight College. Um, what do I think about the dorms? I think they are really nice. Actually, I'm set up in what they call a sextet. So I have a big double room, right? I have one roommate right now and I'm sharing a double that's slightly bigger than all the other doubles. Next door is actually a quad. So there's two tiny doubles attached to a common room. But since my double doesn't have a common room, I actually get to share the common room next door. So I get some added space here and I get the common room. So I think it worked out pretty well. In terms of the dorms, I mean, they're really nice. A lot of them have like fireplaces that aren't in use because you can't have fires here. I really enjoyed the dorms because they're really unique. Like there's no specific set size. Some are singles, doubles, triples. There's even like an octet with eight sophomores living in it on the other side of the college and that's crazy. All right, Lavinia, thanks for your question. I hope I answered that. Okay, next question from Brian. What do you think will be more difficult academically? Your first semester at Yale or your senior year of high school in which you took seven AP classes? College academics is a lot different from high school academics from what I've taken in so far. Um, my first semester right now, I'm only taking five classes compared to the seven that I was taking in high school. And the classes, I'm only spending about three hours in class per week for each of my classes compared to like seven hours every day in high school. So I think in terms of like going to classes, it's a lot less stressful. But then you also have this giant mountain of work that you have to get done each week for each class. Like, especially with my problem sets with math, physics, and computer science, those take a very long time. In terms of difficulty, um, it's really hard to compare, but at least right at the moment, I think my senior year was a little bit more stressful just because I was forced to spend so much time in class. Um, Brian, I hope that answers your question. All right, next question is from Marco, and he actually sent us a video. Hey, Josh, what's up? Um, I'm a junior in high school right now, and I also play baseball just like you did. And I just want to ask you, how did you handle with baseball and your AP classes on SAT prep during high school? So in other words, how did your daily routine look? By the way, love the channel. Keep it going. Awesome. Thank you, Marco, for your question. So he asked, what did my daily routine look like balancing AP classes with SAT prep and playing baseball at the same time? So here, I'll just give you guys a little lay down of what a day in my life as like a junior or senior in high school looked like. So first I would wake up as late as I possibly could. Um, in high school I definitely struggled getting enough sleep every night, so I wanted to wake up as late as I possibly could to still get to school on time, if that makes sense. Then I'd get to school, 
I'd go through all my classes. My biggest tip to you guys when it comes to time management and managing so many classes is actually using every little bit of free time that you have. So that means if you're in class and you have like 10 minutes left because class finishes early, whip out another class work and start working on homework for that night or start studying um, flashcards are really good or like Quizlet on your phone. Just always be studying, always be working on something during every free moment during school time so you'll have more free time once you get home. So that applies to even lunch period or I got made fun of a lot because um, right after school, right before baseball practice, I'd get to the dugout early and I'd be working on like calculus homework or something in the dugout when all the coaches were coming in and you know, it's a little embarrassing, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get your work done. So use every free moment you have during school. Um, like I said, I'd have baseball practice after school that would go till normally six or 6.30. I'd get home, eat, and then work on any homework that I wasn't able to finish at school. A lot of the times, surprisingly, I'd be able to finish most of my homework at school because of all that like extra time that they have in there. So I'd finish any homework that I would have, then I'd study for any upcoming tests. A lot of my studying in high school consisted of just little concentrated bits of studying. I didn't try to cram anything in the night before. It was just doing a little bit every night to make sure that I was grasping the material. Any free time that I had would be spent working out at the gym, um, practicing magic because that's one of my favorite hobbies and I love to do it. Or if it was like a month or two before a SAT test, that's when I would do my SAT studying time during that hour or so of free time that I would sometimes have. Like I said, you're not gonna have free time every night. So my advice to you would be prioritize your work while you're at school. So when you get home, you have maybe an hour or so of free time that you can spend working on SAT prep or your hobbies, and then you still get to bed on time. Marco, I hope that answered your question. I'm super happy that you're uh, playing baseball and on that grind in school, and hopefully it works out for you. All right, the next question is from Jordan. He asks, question is, did you know you were going to do ROTC before attending Yale, and did you apply for scholarships? Yes, I did know I was doing ROTC before I applied to Yale, because I had to apply for an ROTC scholarship that was due in December and then my Yale application was due like January 1st. I 100% recommend that you apply for an ROTC scholarship because you're guaranteed to get at least something, especially if you have the stats to apply to a school like Yale. Jordan, thanks for your question. I hope that answered it. Um, next question is from Mikey P. He asks, what grades did you have in high school and what grades do you think people need to have to get into certain colleges? Okay, this is kind of a subjective question. Me personally in high school, I had straight A's all four years. I came out with a 4.0 unweighted. But that, that's good, but that's not necessarily the case for everyone. Um, you can have B's and still get into Ivy League schools. You can have mess ups. At the end of the day, it's gonna be about the culmination of your whole application with your extracurriculars, your community service, your essays. I mean, having one B and slipping up doesn't make that big of a difference in your application as a whole, but you wanna to try to do the best you possibly can with the resources that you have to get into the college that you wanna get into. Mikey, I hope that answers your question. All right, guys. Because I received so many questions, I've actually decided to split this video into two parts because I didn't want you guys watching like a super long video and trying to sit through all that. So I'm going to split it into two different parts, release it on two different days. I hope that's okay with you guys and I can't wait for more videos to come in the future. If you enjoyed the Q&A, drop a like, hit that big red subscribe button for more content in the future. As always, I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. See you soon.